All right, we're looking at unit one here, which is financial mathematics, which is called investing money. Uh, 1.1 is called simple interest, and that's on pages 6 to 17 in your textbook. Your curriculum outcome is 30.1, where we need to demonstrate understanding of financial decision making, including analysis of renting, leasing, and buying credit compound interest investment portfolios. And our lesson objectives, number one today, we need to be familiar with the following terms. Term, interest, interest rate, fixed interest rate, principal, simple interest, maturity, future value, and rate of return. And number two, we need to develop and understand and use simple interest formulas. And number three, to be able to construct and interpret graphs that represent simple interest situations. Here's some terminology that you need to become familiar with to understand this unit. First one is the principal, and that's the amount of money that you're actually investing. So that would be the letter P. In the interest is the amount of money earned on an investment or a loan. The interest rate is the rate at which you will make money, usually given as an annual interest rate, that's a keyword, annual, and as a percentage. And we use the letter R to represent that. A fixed interest rate is an interest rate that is guaranteed not to change. The term, the term is the amount of time the money is invested or loaned, and we use the variable T for that. The maturity is the contracted end date of an investment or loan. So if you invest your money over five years, the mature, it will be matured at the end of five years. The future value is the amount that an investment will be worth after a specific period of time, and that is the variable A. And the rate of return is the ratio of money earned or lost on an investment compared to how much money you actually invested. So developing a simple interest formula. So in order to develop a simple interest formula, we're going to use a little bit of previous knowledge and probably a great deal of what we would call common sense, as long as you're familiar with working with uh, percentages and money, which I think we all are. We'll also use an example with actual numbers to help us build this formula. But you do need to know one more definition, and that's of what simple interest actually is. So simple interest is when the interest you make is only calculated from the original amount of money that you put in i.e. you don't make interest on the interest from the previous terms calculation. So it's only based on what you put in originally. So an important note, interest rates are always advertised as annual. I've already said that once, but it's a really key point. That means if the interest is being calculated every month, every three months, or every six months, you need to adjust your interest calculation. So if you're talking about a monthly um, interest, you have to divide your interest rate by 12. So say you're getting like 4% interest, on your money, then every time they calculate it at the end of each month, you're not actually getting 4% at the end of each month, you're getting 4% divided by 12. If we're talking about quarterly, then you would divide that number by four. And if you're talking about it happening semi-annually, then you would divide that number by two. So here's an example. It says, how much money will you make if you invest $1,000 with a simple interest rate of 3% calculated annually over the course of five years? So we're gonna put in the actual calculation over here, and then on this side, we'll do it with just variables so we can make up this formula. So our actual calculation, we know that if we take $1,000 and we're making 3% interest, that means we would multiply that number by 0 0.03, and we would get $30. Now, the thing with simple interest is that doesn't matter how much money you have in the bank, at the end of the first year, you still only get interest based on how much money you put into the bank. So that means after the first year, you get an extra $30. After the second year, you get another $30. Third year, fourth year, and fifth year, you get 30 bucks each time. So in the end, you have made $30 over five years. So that would be like saying five times $30, which would be $150. Now, if you wanted to know how much money you totally have at the end of this whole thing, you would have $1,000, your original amount, plus the $150 that you made in interest, which would be $1,150. So that's a basic concept, something that I think we can all understand. So if we were going to create this formula with variables, well, what we did is we took the amount that we put in the bank, which was 1000 That's called your principal. We multiply that by P. And then we multiply that by the interest rate. Now, the interest rate, you have to make sure is that I or sorry, we used we used the variable r. r has to be in decimal form. It can't be um, a percentage, so you have to move that decimal place two places to the left. And then, well, th we did this for five times because we calculate the calculated the interest five times. So that would be our t, the amount of time that's elapsed, so five years. So we've got this concept that the amount of money is equal to our interest rate, 
So this is how much, we, not our interest rate, sorry, but this is how much we made in interest. And then we also had an original amount inside the bank as well. So this would be called our principal. So the, the amount of interest you made plus your principal is the amount of money that's now in the account. So there's our formula. Now, you might see this formula written a little bit differently because you can take out a greatest common factor of P here. So your formula might be written like this sometimes. If we take out a P, then we're left with one plus R T. And these two things are exactly the same formula. I would write them both on a formula sheet. So you have them for the course of the year. So here's our example. It says Albert invests $3,500 in a bank account at 5% simple interest paid semi-annually. How much does his investment amount to after five years and after 10 years? And then what is his rate of return after 10 years? So using our formula, we've got A equals P, one plus RT. So the amount in the account is $3,500 to begin with. One plus our rate, well that's 5%, but since it's being paid semi-annually, that's actually half of that, which is 2.5%. So we'll write that as a decimal. And that's over five years. So putting that in our calculator, we find out the total amount in the account after five years is $3,937.50. Now, if we change that to 10 years, then we've got the same numbers except the only thing that's different is the five here turns into a 10. Plug that into our calculator and we get 4375. So the next thing that it asks is what is his rate of return after 10 years? Well, your rate of return is always how much interest you made. Almost spelled return wrong. Um, is your amount of interest over the amount that you put in. So the interest you made divided by your principal. So the interest we made here, you'll have to figure out by taking this number and comparing it to the number that we put in, which is 3,500. So 4,375 minus 3,500 is $875. So over 10 years, this Albert made $875 and that is divided by the principal, which is $3,500. That gives you an answer of 0 0.25, which means his rate of return is 25% over 10 years. So all that means that if you invest a bunch of money the same way Albert did in a bank account at 5% being paid semi-annually, you are guaranteed to make over 10 years 25% more than you put in. All right, we're taking a quick look at what the graph of the last situation would look like. And in one case, we're looking at the total investment. Other case, we're looking at the total interest that that person made. So Albert initially started off with 3,500 bucks. So that would be like a point on your y-axis. If your y-axis was the amount of money that he had, and then your x-axis would be how much time's elapsed. So in investing $3,500 at an annual interest rate of 5%, he was only making 0.025% every time they calculated it because it was being calculated semi-annually. So if this was after one year, this would be after two years, be after three years, etc., etc., etc. He was only making $87.50 every half a year. So every dot that you put on this graph, the increment here would be another $87.50, up another $87.50, then up another $87.50, up another $87.50, etc., etc., etc. So what you're getting is just a series of dots on this graph. If we're looking at the total interest, the only thing that changes between these two graphs is that we're looking at the interest so we don't really care about how much money he started off with. So initially he had zero dollars made on interest. But then again, after every half year, he's making 87.50. So these dots would go up every half year. He would make 87.50. And so there's a few things you need to know. These dots are not joined, and the reason they're not joined is because he's not making interest anywhere in between these periods. They're calculating the interest after every half year, every six months. So you can't put any sort of dot in between these dots because that would indicate that they're calculating interest in between those that period of time, and they're not doing that. And second, notice that the slope of these two lines are the same because we're really just looking over half a year. There, he's making 87.50, so when we're talking about slope, slope being rise over run. 
That means um, the slope of this line would be 8750, each of these dots, for the run being half a year. So you could figure out numerically what that would be. And our final example it says, at what annual interest rate would you want to invest your money if you wanted $5,000 to grow into $15,000 over the course of eight years? So using our equation, we've got A equals P, one plus RT. And it doesn't say that we're calculating the interest anything other than annually. So we're gonna assume that we're, it's just an annual interest rate that you're looking for. So the amount of money that you want to have in your account is 15,000 and you're putting 5,000 in. The rate at which we're investing that money, we don't know, but we do know the time and that's over eight years. So your best bet at this point is to just isolate, try and isolate R the best you can. And so you're gonna to wanna to divide both sides by 5,000. And that means that these 5,000s cancel off. You're left with a three over here and you're left with a one plus um, R times eight. Now we wanna get rid of this one. So we're gonna subtract one from both sides. So we end up with a two equals eight R. And then we have to divide both sides by eight. So we get R equaling two over eight, which is a quarter, which is 0 0.25. So that means if you want your investment of $5,000 to grow to $15,000 and you're using simple interest, then you're gonna have to look for a rate of 25% and banks just don't do that. So good luck. So in summary, Simple interest is when the interest that you make or owe is only calculated upon the amount of money that you invested or borrowed, also known as the principal, end bracket. Uh, the total amount of money that you have or owe after the investment or borrowing can be found with the following formula. And that is that A is equal to P plus PRT. And if you took out P as the greatest common factor, you get that A is equal to P times one plus RT. Now, if you only needed to calculate the amount of interest you made or the amount of interest that you owe, you could use the following formula. And that means that I is just the end of this formula, right? It's just your principal multiplied by your rate multiplied by how long you are have that money invested in the bank, or if you're borrowing money, how long you've borrowed it for. The graph of the total value of your investment and the graph of just the interest accumulated over the term of your investment will have both have the same slope, sorry, but they'll have different starting points, which means they have different y-intercepts, and we did an example of that. And your assignment is found on pages 14 to 17. Good luck, and we'll see you in class.